are new to the conversation today. Um, so if, if any of you are, came here looking for some particular type of information, um, you can feel free to put that in the chat or, um, you know, we, we have time for a few of you to, to, to tell us um, if you would just show your hand, um, we, we'd love to know what is it that you're looking to learn today. Amy, I realized we don't have the raise hand option here, so we may need to just take turns with people unmuting themselves. <laughs> yeah. Or put it in the chat and we could call on them that way. Oh, I see Anne actually raised her hand. So oh, yeah. it does work. Okay. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Anne. Tell us what you're hoping to learn today. Okay, I was just checking to see if it worked or not, but I'll be real. <laughs> I'll, I'll be really quick. Um, I live in a post-industrial area that was a major port, lots of rail traffic, and they're doing some um, relooking at what kind of tourism, sustainable tourism, would happen. And nobody who's doing the main street, doing the other stuff, is looking at rails to trails at this time. They did in the past for a short area, but I need to I need to become more informed with what rails to trails in the 21st century is. So I'm learning from all of you. I will now take my hand down. It works. <laughs> all right. I will quickly say um, that uh, it seems to me that that one of the next big things in the rail trail movement is um, connectivity. Um, longer trails, connecting um, trails to each other um, so that people can really move around, around uh, whether that's for commuting and just active transportation or for travel or enjoyment, uh, connectivity and, and trail networks is um, something that a lot of people are paying attention to, including the Rails to Trails Conservancy. Um, I see another, I thought I saw a comment for a second. Um, oh, Julie is looking for ideas to uh, add to, 18. I can talk if you want. Yeah, tell me because I don't know what it, I don't, when I see, I think I think Appalachian Trail, but tell me. No, sorry. Um, I'm working with some communities around the state who work on active transportation um, mm -hmm. plans, and a lot of that involves um, trails and um, resources that are already available in their communities. And so I'm so um, engrossed by um, this idea that I just want to learn as much as I can so I can suggest it to some of the communities I work with. Oh, great. Okay, thanks. Anyone else? Maybe somebody who hasn't, uh, wasn't on the call last time. Uh, Dawn, go ahead. I think you're on mute still, Dawn. Okay. Yay. So somebody, somebody made a comment um, the last time we were together that when riding through Canal Fulton, you don't know what's available in the town because there are no indicators pointing to you that one block away, there's all these little shops and restaurants. Um, that was so shocking to me, but I live here, so I know what's downtown and I know what's just one block off the trail, but it was super shocking to me that coming through town on the trail, you wouldn't realize that. So I'm here to learn, okay, what do we need to do? What kind of signs do we need to put out that says one block away, you have coffee shops and a chocolate shop and a da, 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 you know, mm. yeah. so specifics. Yeah, sometimes we don't see what's not in our communities and that's why it's so important for other people to tell us what they're seeing or not seeing. Absolutely, yeah. it was shocking. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a good insight. Uh, Laura? Um, so I work for a local municipality um, and I would love for us to become a trail town. I would love for us to get some bike friendly businesses. Um, I'm not sure that we don't have a dedicated staff person to turning things bike friendly. Um, so I'm not sure I personally have the capacity and I also don't think that the big brother wants to do this kind of approach is necessarily the best. So I'm interested in what cultivate that sort of grassroots New York district. There's more, we need parallel parking. We need the parking as close as possible 
Um, and yet we have the Ohio to Erie coming one block off of that shopping district right through the middle of our town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. All right. Thanks. You were breaking up a little in the middle, but I, I think we got the gist. I, and where you have, where I did catch you again was just talking about uh, it seems like maybe the community is, is missing the opportunity. It's right before them uh, being the trail um, is a part of what I got, as well as the fact of having limited municipal resources to um, manage a, a trail town effort. Um, okay, anyone want to have a last word before we move um, move on? All right, that's good. Um, this, I don't know if you've really followed, but this has been billed as a conversation. So I appreciate everyone jumping in early. Um, that's what's going to make this um, workshop work. Um, so what we're going to do now, like I said, is a bit of an overview of what it means to be a trail town. <clears throat> Those of you who were with us in December um, would have seen some of these same slides, uh, but I've cut them back a lot and I'm going to go through them faster, but I think this will just sort of level set, um, you know, um, uh, get everyone on, in the same place um, to, to be able to have a conversation today. So uh, we're looking today at applying the uh, lessons of trail towns and uh, what we're going to um, talk about, we're already through this first agenda item. Uh, we're now going to do this review of trail towns. We're going to have some small group discussion um, around culture and hospitality and, and what it means it, um, to, to be a trail community um, in, in the way of uh, trail culture. Um, we're also going to look at uh, community readiness and, you know, talk a little bit about how, how ready your, your communities may be to take on trail towns. Um, and we're going to do that in the second half of the discussion um, um, after we have our break. I, I think our break's going to be sometime around 1220, just so that everyone knows. Um, a note for Jody, um, I'm not able to watch the chat during this. So if you see anything that you need me to know, um, feel free to jump in and let me know. I will. Thanks. Great. So as for Trail Towns, um, it's, it's a program that was established in 2007. Um, and I recently in my book looked at the first 15 years of, program, of the program um, from whenever it was first an idea in the early 2000s um, up until last year. <clears throat> and um, it was a, a regional program that uh, was initiated along the Great Allegheny Passage in order to um, help the communities along that trail better connect to and better benefit from the trail. They, they weren't really benefiting in the way that was known to be possible. So this Main Street style program um, that is multi-community and multi-state um, was created. Uh, a lot of you have been on the gap. This is the, the map uh, showing the, the route from Pittsburgh to Cumberland. Um, and then that goes on to uh, the Sino Canal towpath goes on to DC. So it's a really significant um, trail. And the idea is, well, how can we benefit from it more as a region? Um, I have a train going past my house right now. I don't know if you could hear that or not. Um, but we considered the program to be a regional approach to rural economic development. Um, while that trail uh, connects to cities, um, really uh, goes through a lot of rural post-industrial small towns. And um, we were looking at it um, through an economic lens whenever we created and operated the program. Um, I was there, by the way, for five years um, before starting my practice. So um, my, my experience was with the implementation in the first five years. Um, some of the components of that program, um, it was a trail that was, re or a program that was regional in nature. Um, this is not a one town at a time type thing, at least not um, at its best. So, um, it was regional. Um, we did community assessments uh, on that idea of someone else coming into your town and walking around and telling you what they see. Um, you know, that was a part of that model um, because sometimes we don't see for ourselves um, some of the opportunities and some of what's missing in our communities. 
Um, there was uh, economic research and trail use research. It was important for us to understand how trail users were spending and interacting with the communities, how many people were out on the trail each year. Um, it, there was also business assistance, which was a critical part of that program. There, there's a loan pool available to, to help uh, small businesses to, to, um, to open and to expand to cater to the trail market. Um, so that, that speaks to that access to capital bullet that you see here. Um, and uh, there was brand development and marketing. The, the trail at that time was, um, you know, a lot of people were still getting to know the trail. The trail wasn't even finished at the time. Um, so there was a lot of marketing um, of the trail and of the communities along the trail. And finally, um, we put a lot of energy, um, a lot of grant funds, um, you know, received into infrastructure, helping to improve those trail to town connections, things like um, bike lanes and sidewalks, bike racks, uh, signs and public art. Um, how do you make it um, both easier, safer and uh, more compelling to draw people from the trail into your community? Um, this is just a snapshot of what the economic impact has looked like over the years. Um, before the trail was complete and before the Trail Town program was started, um, the, the impact was rather modest uh, at a regional scope, um, but uh, it improved over the years. The last study was done in 2012, and the Allegheny Trail Alliance, which oversees the trail, is uh, undertaking a study this uh, year. Um, so we will know soon what's happened between 2012 and 2019. So I think the story of trail towns becomes more interesting um, right here. Uh, so what happened was uh, some other organizations in other parts of the country took notice to the idea of trail towns, this multi-community approach to helping communities to better connect to, to trails and um, started to create their own programs. Um, there was one in Florida, um, the Appalachian Trail um, created a program. They were one of the first. The CNO uh, Canal uh, Towpath created a ca Canal Towns partnership. Um, and so suddenly you have this program that was designed for a 150 mile rail trail, and you have national scenic trails that are making it their own. I mean, the Appalachian Trail is more than 2,200 miles long and goes through something like 13 states, and, and they you know, adapted the model to make it work for them. Um, you probably know that there's a Buckeye Trail Town program um, that is sort of like an overlay with the North Country Trail program. Um, so um, very interesting stuff. Uh, people were taking the idea and using it. And this is where we are today. Um, I recently created this map just to show that, you know, there are um, like something like 25 or 30 states and provinces that have a trail town presence. And uh, the ones that are in the dark, green on this map uh, represent those places. So it's really exciting. Um, trail towns are just like everywhere now, um, or it will be soon. And I think that there are two basic models. Um, there's the model that we did along the gap. Um, by the way, if I didn't make it clear, the gap is the Great Allegheny Passage, abbreviated. Um, but the, the program we did was trail specific. The Appalachian Trail Program or the Buckeye Trail Program, those are trail specific. Um, there also are state models. And I'm telling you this because, you know, you're gathered from the state of Ohio and, and there, there could at some point be possibility um, for a state agency or some other statewide entity to um, operate a trail town program um, out of a state uh, agency. Uh, so I want you to know that. There, there are three so far, Kentucky was first, and then Florida and Michigan created uh, programs over the last couple of years. So there are different ways at going at creating trail towns. Um, the model is used on trails of every type. And um, there are all kinds of different benefits because the program is applied differently in different places by different types of organizations along different types of trails. Um, you know, the benefits vary, but, but some of the more common benefits are listed here. Uh, communities um, sometimes uh, get to tie into a, a trail-wide brand or a statewide brand 
Um, they might have signs uh, on along their highways or at the entrances for the communities that indicate that they're trail towns. They have access to resources and a, and a whole network of people who get trails and, and understand the benefits of trails. Uh, there's increased pride of place that occurs. That's one of those longer term benefits, um, collaborative problem solving. And trail users begin to associate your community as being trail friendly. Um, those of you who have um, spent a lot of time on the Ohio to Erie Trail or the Gap or any other um, trail that you go to use and visit, um, you understand what I'm saying. Uh, people start to to understand what, what towns are catering to and being friendly to trail users. And, and you seek them out and you tell other people about them. Um, I included this slide last time as well, but just to remind you that, that your Ohio Trails vision document um, includes a notation about trail towns. Um, so, uh, and if, I don't know, Tom or Jody, are, are you able to remind me which state agency produces this document? This was the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. Okay, I so, believe. so your DNR creates the Ohio Trails vision and, and they understand um, the, the value of trail towns. Um, and and uh, that, that doesn't mean necessarily that, that they're you know, on the path to, to create and host a program, but, but at least it's made its way to the vision. And I Absolutely. think that's important yeah. to know. So, Going back to that slide for a second, there, there's a notation here about promoting growth and economic vitality. Um, I believe that that uh, the economic piece is really important. Um, tourism and, and small business benefit, community benefit as related to trail tourism and outdoor the outdoor economy um, matters a lot. Um, but one of the things that I started to notice over the years was an overemphasis on that one benefit. Um, and so I, the direction I've taken my business and the reason that I wrote um, Deciding on Trails um, was to encourage communities to take a holistic look at the benefits of trails and, and why we should um, invest in them. Um, and I'm guided by this quote by Otto Leopold, which is a system of conservation based solely on economic self-interest is hopelessly lopsided. So I'm here to say that the economic benefit matters, but I have been working with communities to think about um, what else matters as well. As well. Um, if you had asked me years ago what it means to be a trail town, it, I would have answered you, um, you know, related to trail economy and economic benefit. Again, that still matters, but, but where I am now is really at the bottom of this pyramid. Um, you know, I think, I think what it means to be a trail town is, is that the trail becomes an integral part of the community's identity, that there's a culture that is built up around that trail or trails. Some of you are lucky to have multiple trails in your communities. Um, I shared this slide the last time. This is uh, the High Trestle Trail Bridge in Iowa. Really fantastic um, trail, only 24 miles long. Um, but take note of the, um, uh, the arches here on this trail. This was an investment. Uh, they could have just put any bridge to span the river valley, but instead they did something really special. Um, and this gets you know, to the question um, around signs and ways to draw people in the community. <laughs> Next slide, this slide, it, you see what's happening here. This, this, um, uh, this, this sign directing people into, um, into town for services, they, they are mimicking the, the shape of those bridge arches. So they have decided as a community um, that they are going to you know, make the most of that iconic location and, and use it to draw people's attention. Whether they're noticing that exact you know, um, shape or not, um, they have this sign right along the trail directing people into town. It, it's an invitation into town. Um, and, um, you know, another way of thinking about trail towns is it's a decision to pay attention to trails at the community level. Um, that's why my book is called Deciding on Trails. I wanted to say, um, and this again is just something I pulled from the book, is whatever you do, please remember that communities should build and connect to trails for themselves not for hoped for visitors. 
Um, the visitors are great um, and we want them, but, but if you are creating your trails and caring for them and, and taking on some of the um, trail town best practices, um, you know, if, if you're doing it from a place of wanting, wanting the trails and to connect to them for, for community benefit, um, the, the other benefits of, of tourism and visitation, they, they end up um, happening as well. Um, so as for those best practices, um, I have outlined seven best practices that I think that healthy trail towns follow. And um, the last time I had several slides over this, I've condensed them down to one just to, to remind everyone of what those are. Um, so the first is to adopt a shared vision around your trails um, that, that, you know, anything that you do is, is rooted in, in vision and, and some sense of planning um, that's taken place. Um, the second is to physically connect trail to town. Um, this is where a lot of the conversations end up taking place around trail towns, those physical trail to town connections, again, to make it safer and easier and more compelling for people to get in and out of town. Um, to and from the trail. Um, the third is to extend an invitation. Uh, some people don't need an invitation to trails, um, but a lot of people do. Um, and they, they uh, again, don't, all, you know, some people don't need an invitation into your town. They, they might just make their way on their own, but um, a lot of other people do. Um, so we have to be deliberate about inviting people. Um, the fourth practice is to cultivate a trail culture. Um, I'm going to talk more about that, and I believe that that's the bedrock practice and that you find it in all of these other practices. The fifth is to know your market. It's important to understand who's using your trail, who's not, who could be. Um, the sixth is to share your community story, or if you're a small business, share your business story. Um, what is it about your place um, and your trail um, that is special um, and, and will appeal to others? Um, and the seventh is to commit to quality trails. We have to take good care of them. Um, there, it's a competitive marketplace in the world of tra rail trails. We have um, you know, over 2000 rail trails in the United States. So what is it about yours um, that, that is appealing? So um, that was a lot. Um, that was just uh, to get you again, familiarized with the idea of trail towns. Um, before we move into some conversation. Um, are there any questions about the trail town model? Gonna give it another minute here. Jody, do you see any hands raised or? Um, I'm looking. Okay. And, and please don't hesitate to ask. Um, the, the reason we're holding this um, follow-up workshop is to go a little bit deeper into what was shared the last time. So questions are invited. Um, and I will go back to the last slide. The ones that I have in bold are things that I love talking about. So if you um, are also interested in sort of what I would call like this softer side of trail towns, um, don't hesitate to ask about those, those kinds of topics um, either. I'm gonna share your, the link to your book in the chat box as well. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, not hearing any questions. We are gonna keep going. Feel free to ask questions at any point um, related to the Trail Town model and how it works and how it could work for your community. And we're going to come back to that after the break as well. Um, but for now, um, because I think that uh, culture is so important, um, cultivating a, a trail culture, uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about um, culture and hospitality. Um, so if somebody has some music going on, if you're able to mute yourself, that, that would be, thanks Jody. <laughs> I have a chiming clock, sorry. Um, so just two things to say about 
culture before opening it up here. Um, you know, to me, it's an underlying uh, trail culture that sustains an outdoor economy and keeps bringing people back to your town again and again and to your trail again and again. Um, you know, like if you go someplace and, and the local residents don't use or appreciate or care for the trail, you can feel it and you notice it and you don't recommend that trail or that town and you probably don't go back. So, um, you know, having this culture um, of, of appreciating trails and investing in them really does um, eventually lead to the uh, economic impact. Um, and, and without a culture that celebrates and invests in trails, communities are setting the stage for a transactional economy. You know, to me, that's um, those are the towns that are interested only in the economic benefit or what I call the cash register moment. You know, they're just like trying to get people in, into town to spend. And that's all that they're really thinking about um, whenever really I think, you know, the healthiest trail communities are are, are thinking um, a lot more holistically about trails and, and how um, how they're being used and promoted, um, including how their local residents are using them. Um, so, so, so these practices that I shared, I do think that they are indicative of a trail culture, um, the, the combination of the practices. And um, if you'll indulge me, I just wanna like share a, a story from Kentucky and, and read a bit, um, a section from my book related to that. Um, so in Kentucky, they have a statewide program, as I mentioned, it's the, it was the first statewide trail town program. And Elaine Wilson is the name of the woman who um, started the program. Um, she heard about the GAPS program and she called the Allegheny Trail Alliance and she asked for permission to do something similar, um, except it was way different because she, they operated it out of a state agency. And um, so Elaine in the early days of trail towns in Kentucky was um, in a town along the Trans-America Trail. And um, so she, she's in this town and she's standing at the trailhead and she's talking with um, a group of people about it. And, and she said, well, you must experience at least some economic benefit from people passing through, you know, using the Trans-America Trail. And um, they said, no, not really. They, they don't even stop, they go right on through. And uh, her question to them was, well, have you invited them in? And um, <laughs> it, she, she wasn't being glib. She, it was a serious question. Like, you know, what were they doing to extend an invitation um, and to let people know that there's a reason to stop in this town? Um, and so in the next chapter of my book, I pick on up on that story of Elaine standing there with, with those folks along the, at the trailhead, you know, talking about the invitation. Um, and, and here's what I write. I write, when someone is standing at your trailhead, wondering about town, a welcome sign is an invitation. A business directory is an invitation. Sidewalk chalk and share the road stencils are invitations. Before a visiting trail user ever interacts with a member of your community, they pick up on the physical cues and signs of welcome that your town puts in place. They are picking up on the personality of your community. The same goes for local residents. They too can be made to feel welcome to trails. Um, and so you see with this um, image, along uh, the Trans-America Trail, uh, Bike Route 76, um, the cyclist stopover. Um, that's something that may not have um, existed before Elaine had that conversation with, with that community. Um, it was something that had to be pointed out to them that, that there are things that we can do to um, extend an invitation and a sense of welcome and uh, warm hospitality. Um, the Continental Divide Trail Coalition. They host a gateway communities program, which is, you know, similar to trail towns. And the way that they think of gateway communities um, is that a gateway community is a friendly place to visit. And so this brings me back to Ohio and um, the uh, town of Milford. Uh, so whenever I was in Milford, I was completely wowed by um, how bicycle and trail friendly the town felt. Um, you know, whenever you're up at the trailhead, you um, see what are the nearest towns, what are the services in those towns, and what is here in Milford, and um, you know which way do I go? Um, and then, of course, whenever you're in town, this picture on the right showing the bike trail sign um, is directing people out to the trail, um, helping visitors to find their way back, or helping residents to find their way to the trail. Um, 
And then I just, I loved seeing like bikes everywhere in Milford. Um, this is in a ice cream or co coffee and ice cream shop. Uh, just, you know, antique bike propped up in the storefront says something about the community and, and you know, the value that it's pla places on, on trails and cycling. Um, and I had a chance also that same year to talk with Emily White, who is one of the owners of Roads, Rivers and Trails Outfitters. And, um, you know, this picture obviously isn't of her shop, but, um, you know, she said to me, what really makes a town is the kind of services it offers. We like to pamper our visitors. And she went on to tell me about how, um, you know, they they will uh, offer, you know, free showers and a place to sit and use Wi-Fi. And um, sometimes they'll give people, you know, um, who are doing long distance hiking or, or biking, um, you know, a ride to the laundromat, or they might even buy them a beer. Um, you know, this is the spirit of trail towns. You know, like you have um, the things that you do at the trailhead to to and throughout the community in terms of infrastructure that are making uh, people feel welcome and take notice of trails. Um, and then you have the things that people do and that small businesses do um, to, you know, really um, improve that that interaction and, and that town visit. Um, and I thought that, you know, the things that Emily was talking about, um, you know, really, um, you know, uh, represent that very well. So here's the thing, you can do some of these things without having a formal trail town initiative. Um, there, and these things are already occurring in communities um, that don't have a trail town program. It's just people and businesses understanding um, their trail market and, and how, how to best cater to it. Uh, Milford happens to be a trail town. It's a trail town along the Buckeye Trail. Um, but, you know, if even if Milford was not a trail town, um, it's quite possible that, that Emily would have said some of those same things and that, that, you know, you would have picked up on some of that same character throughout town. Um, you know, here's a pedicab that's sitting outside of a restaurant. Um, another um, sign, this, this trail town sign on the left was probably something that Milford earned uh, as part of uh, becoming designated as a uh, Buckeye Trail community. Um, and so you, you know, the sign is located at, at an entrance into town, um, but you can see the uh, bike rack in the background um, that's outside of um, a craft brewery. And then on the left or on the right, um, you have a, a little shop that has nothing to do with trails or outdoor recreation, but, but you see the bikes in the storefront. Um, so again, going back to that idea of a trail town being a friendly place to visit. Um, Tom, what was this community again? You're on mute if you're responding or anyone. Uh, that, is, that is actually uh, downtown Mount Vernon, Ohio. Mount Vernon, yep. Um, talk about friendly, right? I mean, this actually like, you know, a, a fountain with dogs, um, you know, this is really, I, I know I was kind of uh, so excited about it last time and I, I am still, uh, you know, that this is something special and it, it doesn't have to do with trails. Um, but if, if, if you're using a trail and you, and you know that this is in town, uh, you might make a detour to, to go visit. It's only two to three blocks off the trail too. So, so easy, yeah. And um, one of the great advantages of a lot of your communities is is um, the topography in, in much of Ohio. Um, if you're on the Great Allegheny Passage or any other uh, mountainous region, um, you know, trail users face a decision whether, as to whether to go into town, right? Are they gonna have to go down a hill or up a mountain or, or what and um, you know living in a, a region where you know it, it's I assume Tom it's it's a couple two or three blocks um, nearly level blocks right uh, yes it is and the city has uh, did some efforts to make it bicycle friendly improving uh, a pathway down as mm -hmm. Randy on this webinar also mentioned that they're looking at complete streets but the traffic engineer has done a pretty good job of making it safer to get to this um, yeah yeah right so so there's an investment there um so this all sets us up for a breakout discussion um, amy 
I, I just wanted to add that Carrie said, I love this photo. This needs to be in our town's promotion reels. So yeah. she's from Mount Vernon. Yeah. It does. That's my, that's my photo. <laughs> yes. So you'll have to get Tom's permission, but yeah, it's a great photo. Okay, so we're gonna do breakout discussions. Um, I'd like to ask you if you're able to show your video while you're in breakouts, and that'll allow you to have a better small group discussion. Uh, but we're gonna send you into small groups um, to talk about um, what we just discussed. If you could discuss, discuss how trail culture um, does or doesn't yet exist in your communities, um, um, I would appreciate that. Just, you know, um, this is just like a free flowing conversation with your small group. Um, you can feel free to share examples of um, how uh, your community has extended the invitation, um, how local uh, people and businesses are offering hospitality and services. Just, just build upon what, what I've been talking about um, in your small group um if you would so jody's gonna send you out and um we'll have you in that uh group for 10 minutes and i will provide a uh a heads up before we end the room so that um you, you'll get a countdown when it's time okay you'll receive an instruction on your screen just follow that Hello, this is Jody. Is it just Lori and I? Oh, no, we have four in our group, don't we? Lori, Frank, and Jerry. Uh, if you would like to unmute and join. Hi, Lori. Hello. <laughs> and Frank and Jerry, if, if you're available. Um, so <laughs> how, it looks like you and I, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm curious, did Julie Walkoff, uh, connect with you after the last meeting? She, she tried to, I haven't, I haven't been back in touch with Julie. Oh, okay. <laughs> she was just, uh, wanting to follow up on something that you shared in the, in the breakout group. So what are some things that, uh, that steps? that we might want to come to as, <clears throat> you know, part of this workshop is to just figure out what our strategy is for next steps or how this can be a, a good resource for folks. And what do you think that? Right. I, I guess um, I'm, I'm kind of tasked with being the um, liaison for the county commissioners who own most of the Ohio to Erie Trail in Knox County. And we actually have three very different sections of trail and two have their own 501c3 boards. And um, Kakosin Gap Trail uh, has a representative taking part in this today. And then Heart of Ohio Trail Board has a couple of um, people taking part in this today. Oh, okay. good. So Mount Vernon has really embraced Knox County, Ohio has really embraced the trails. Um, mm -hmm. 
They sunk a, a major funding into the CA and C depot uh, right there at the viaduct in Mount mm -hmm. Vernon. And as Tom mentioned, and Randy said, um, you know, their city council is looking at a complete street policy, um, adopting that. So, you know, some of these things uh, about just being more welcoming, you know, to people who are utilizing the trails. But I, I would like for this to expand out into the um, outlying villages and uh, like Centerburg Village. Um, they, they are making strides, but it, it, it's like each village, you know, you're dealing with a different council, you're dealing with a different mayor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Different policies. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, Centerburg is starting to make some strides. Danville Village is starting to, to really come on board now. They're making some great strides. One of the, probably one of the, the best partners throughout this has been Knox Public Health. And that's oh, one that yeah. a lot of people probably wouldn't think of. But um, of course, trails, you know, we, we know how they benefit our health, our physical and mental health. So mm -hmm. I guess I'm, I'm just trying to look at it from a point of view, um, like trying to get some consistency going within the county. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is, and did you happen to attend the Rails to Trails uh, se uh, seminar? It was like two weeks ago. No, I, I missed that one. Okay. <laughs> I think the main thing that I found to be helpful is, you know, the, the formation of the uh, trail friends groups, but you're, yeah, you are blessed with having a uh, very vibrant trail friends group. So uh, I think you folks are more of the model. Um, than well, that's the, good. That's good to hear because so many times um, I think we're a little bit unusual because we, we have about 35 miles of trail. But the fact that uh, there were three 501c3s that dealing with different sections of the trail um, yeah, yeah. was kind of interesting. Um, it, it wasn't like one entity over, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I guess I just need to embrace our diversity and just, um, just go with it. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see obviously more signage business directories. Um, yeah, the share the road stencils. Danville Village just did that. They just put the share I was on the road, which I thought was awesome. Yeah. Trying to get people because they they're in a neat position where um, it's the the end or start of one particular trail and same thing with it, one of the other ones. So the Cocosing Gap Trail and Mohican Valley both end in Danville, Ohio. And mm -hmm. you have to take some village streets to connect. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they they really are they really are trying. So, well, but yeah, I mean, I'm totally on board with this. You know, the Wi-Fi, the um, the showers thing. You know, my my mind starts going, and I was like, wow, what if we could work something out with the local YMCA? Um, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's they great. Have their roots and yeah. you know, offering showers and a place to sleep to people. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, so th that's why these Thank kinds you. of things are good for me to just, you know, it sparks some some new ideas. Well, and that would be my recommendation is maybe to see if there's almost like a book study group that would adopt, you know, her book and sort of work through it and see what type of action items come out of that. It's almost like, um, you know, there's so many resources available. It's hard to know, <laughs> you know, which, right, where to begin. Um, but it that would be i see julie joined us julie did you want to say hi your group ended up uh, not a not a full group huh or yep it was just me so i <laughs> <laughs> i thought well, i would um, come back i just wanted to say hello and i'm kind of just here to listen and learn what people are thinking of doing and see if there's some ideas i can have for support well thank you well i um I think we might might be time to rejoin the um, 
I'm trying to multitask here, aren't I? Let me check the task. And I'm sorry if oh, I monopolized the time there. I, I didn't mean to by any <laughs> stretch you, of the imagination. It was just us because Jerry and, and Frank are, they're, they're here, but they're not. <laughs> but they're not. Speaking, so we gave them their choice. Um, well, would either of you have ideas for a future topic? We haven't planned our next um, steps in this. <laughs> There's Jerry. Oh. So hmm. I don't, give I don't, thought. what do you, oh, I'm on mute. No, you're not. Now you are. <laughs> now, yeah, you're on mute now. <laughs> okay, there it is. Um, okay. You know, I don't, you guys probably have already discussed this, Jody, but what about making a trails town like a coalition in Ohio where you, um, you know, have people in different um, stages of developing their trails town and meeting quarterly or periodically to start working on them. I think, I think that is, that's great. And that's kind of, you know, what we hope will, will branch out of this. Um, so yes, how do we, how do we begin that? And what, what's the next step? Um, I think I'll take that back to the big group because yeah, that I think that would be most helpful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Sure. Jerry, did you want to say hello? Or we're about to go I'll back to the hello. main group. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, good. They're doing some construction in the background, so don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> My little Jack Russell likes barks every time they move, but that's beside the point. Uh, but I kind of kept it unmuted because I was listening. But what was interesting to me, and I'm really glad that you had this this uh, meeting because we were riding um, from uh, Milford, Loveland, up those trails. Uh, we went to Xenia. We've done a couple trails off there, one, one to Dayton. And they're very well marked up there, exactly what you were talking about. Yeah. We're very impressed with what they do. And... Uh, we got to talking about a couple of people we met while we were unloading our bikes or whatever we were doing, and they mentioned doing the uh, Ohio Erie Trail. And I said, oh, well, we got to learn more about that so we can kind of plan. So we're kind of in the low planning stages. We want to go from Cincinnati to Cleveland. And that's where we want to go, and we want to try stay on the paths. And we're trying to map out where we can, how far we can go each day, and, um, and where we can stay. So we're kind of at that, that level as far as us personally. We have about probably probably four to six people are going to go together. So it should be a lot of fun. <laughs> well, thanks, Jerry. Uh, we're going to head back to the main room now, and um, we'll see you all at the, the, next, the next stage. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello, hello. Anybody out there? Yeah, we're here. Okay. All right. I just got to have a breakout room with Laura, who lives up in Westerville. And um, anyhow, I think you just spoke with Jerry, who's planning on doing a, we're planning on doing a bike ride sometime this year from Cincinnati to Cleveland. So um, anyhow, I hope Jerry got some good insights because 
I got some tips on some good ice cream shops up in Westerville, Ohio, behind the <laughs> library. A lot of you probably know Andrea Ireland, who is with the National Park Service um, in out of Ohio. She does the RTCA program, and she always says that all trails lead to beer and ice cream. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, I see Frank. Um, I don't know if that's a picture of you, Frank, or if your screen is frozen, but I, I like that your cat has joined us. Um, here. <laughs> other, other cat and dog sightings are welcome. Um, so thanks everyone for doing the breakout groups. Those, those uh, endings are always so abrupt, even though we got fair warning. Um, you know, you just can't help but be in the middle of a sentence whenever you get booted. Um, and, and we were in the middle of a conversation. Um, why don't you email me um, about that? And, and we can talk about that issue. Um, and uh, Jody, maybe if you have a moment to drop my email in the chat, um, that that would be great. So um, we are going to talk a little bit about your uh, small group conversations when we come back from break. Um, and uh, then what we're going to do after that is we're going to talk about community readiness in terms of um, trail towns, and 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 we're then just going to have a, a conversation around um, you know how your communities. Um, may may be able to um, move into um, trail towns and, and having trail town uh, programs. Um, so that's what's next. Uh, please come back after the break. We have 10 minutes. Um, so by my phone, that is 1235, um, but just look at whatever device you have and give yourself 10 minutes, okay? Thanks everyone. All right, thank you. That's a wrap. <laughs> For now. <laughs> For now. Welcome okay. back. We'll continue our conversation with Amy Camp. Great. Thanks everyone for sticking with us. Um, I wanted to thank you for your small group work and to ask um, for a bit of sharing uh, related to that. Um, again, I sent you in to talk about um, trail culture and hospitality. And, and I'll just say um, from the group that I was in, uh, it seemed to me that, that a uh, main theme of our conversation was around missed opportunities. Um, whether that be um, in terms of uh, certain business services not existing uh, along their trail or in their town, um, or just signs that aren't there that could be, um, you know, ways to better welcome people um, into town and out to the trail. Missed opportunities came up for us quite a bit. And I thought it was interesting because I asked, um, the group about that example I gave about the outfitter that was um, offering free showers and rides to the laundromat and sit around and use our Wi-Fi and maybe we'll buy you a beer. Like those are the kinds of things that don't end up like listed on a website someplace, right? It's just, those are things that they do because they care about and are excited about trail users. You know, um, those are the kinds of things that I call super services. Um, of businesses and people, uh, townspeople going above and beyond to connect to um, the trail and to trail users. And, it, it, you know, I think the thing that came up in our conversation whenever I asked about that was that, that those things are not, not necessarily the norm, right? Um, that, that would be why they're super services. But um, where did your conversations go in terms of hospitality and, and trail culture? Tom, you raising your hand? You're on mute. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that the most common thing in Zoom? You're on yes. mute. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we, we talked about quite a bit about the importance of signage or missing signage. And, um, uh, you know, we had somebody from uh, Westerville on here and talked about, you know, they have beautiful signs in a town, but nothing uh, tells you where the bike shop is or where a restaurant or something is. And so, so we, we talked about that. And also we had Tammy of the health department in our chat. And it's kind of like a missed opportunity too. Often people 
uh, you know, think of a visitor's bureau or the trail organization, but don't think about the uh, health benefits. And, and, you know, Tammy brings a lot, but there, there's also for trail groups, there's money to be held, had, because uh, so much since this pandemic, people are turning to trails for their health. So that's kind of the topics we dwelled on. Mm -hmm. Great. Good. Um, who else would like to share from their group? Randy, go ahead. Um, I didn't realize how our parking spots that are located about every three or four miles along our trail were going to be so important. I just kind of assumed people would walk to the trails or bike to the trails. But during COVID, people that come five or 10 miles or 40 miles away to utilize our trail to get outside, um, our parking lots have just been stuffed. So I think that's something that welcomes people to come to utilize the trail. Um, so it, I didn't think of that as a welcome sign, but it really is. It's easy to access our trail. Yeah, uh, we made it an hour and 40 minutes before the uh, first mention of COVID or an hour and 10 minutes. <laughs> That's remarkable. Um, so, but yes, um, I, in Pennsylvania, I've, I've been doing some COVID related research in terms of how it benefits or how COVID has affected our, our trails um, for better or for worse. And the parking issue is just um, significant. Um, you know, people, people have been going to, to trails in unprecedented numbers. So, so uh, your parking availability um, and, and the quality of, of your parking lots and your trail access areas is, is really important. Go ahead, uh, Lawrence. Were you were you going to say something? No, I just unmuted my microphone. But um, mm -hmm. I talked to I'm in a different room right now. A lady that lives up in Westerville, and she was talking about some of the local commerce the problem they have is getting foot traffic in. That really bicycle riders aren't the foot traffic they're looking for, other than bicycle or ice cream shops, bicycle stores, restaurants. And I said something like, well, maybe they could offer a discount that came back later. I've gone bike riding, quiet, quiet. And um, that's my dog barking. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe offer them a, you know, a five or 10% discount that come back within 30 days. You know, obviously it's hard to carry something on a bicycle back, you know, 20, 30 miles and not break something. So just a, you know, thought, you know, free for thought as far as trying to get people to come back. I've gone back after i've been to some little town going back up there for dinner myself so just um yeah and if they can make their you know storefront enticing with bicycle friendly stuff with an old vintage bicycle or things of that nature that certainly could help you know lure people into their mm -hmm. store where they even have little knickknack cards any any type of bicycle small gifts paraphernalia stuff that would you know entice them to come in just to get them in the door and then like maybe they can be like wow oh look what they got here we'll come back up next weekend we'll bring the wife up and you know look and see what's available so just a thought i couldn't agree with you more um you know a lot of this um again i say it's like the softer side of trail towns but but these messages that we're communicating to people through our actions and our services and our products and our decor um it it's to me it's what what makes a trail town um it's it's a bike propped up in a window um of of some business that has nothing to do with bikes you know it says something um it says a lot right so it's sort of like this this like blend of of like physical cues and and um and some of the the more like intangible um just like actions and attitudes um you know, like hospitality is is not not the work of our visitors bureau. It's it's the work of all of us. And um, and 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 I think we really need to think about how hospitable are we being to our own local uh, residents and neighbors. How welcoming are we to them? Um, you know, and getting them out to the trails. Um, you know, it's not not just about that visitor interaction. Um, anyone else want to share from their small group work? or in general? This is Jody, and I will um, share 
kind of the suggestion that uh, was made is that maybe a, a you know a working group would emerge out of this that would continue to chat regularly to basically be an accountability group, uh, an advisory group. And so it's a suggestion to carry this forward. Um, so more about process than content, I guess. Yeah. Well, I think that's a I really, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I think that's an important suggestion. Um, and what we're going to get into, we'll speak to this a bit, but I, I think like it's one thing to give people an idea of what it means to be a trail town. And it's another, um, to, to know how to do it and how to move it forward. And, and that's where I think a lot of communities get stuck. Um, and it's not made any easier by the fact that um, trail towns are done differently um, everywhere. Anywhere you go, it, there's a different approach to it because it's, you know, there was a model on the gap and then another, another group did it and another group did it. And, you know, like there's no national or international standard. Um, so it's, it's kind of like, a tough thing sometimes for communities to know how to get started and having um, you know the kind of forum you're talking about could help with that um, so before we move into that I just want to um, read Randy's comment he said that he visited a fruit stand on way one in California that offered a 10 percent discount to any cyclist with a helmet yeah great that's promoting good safety but also like um, sometimes we don't know who's who our trail users are right we have to rely on do I see a helmet or do they tell us like you know we don't always know who's who's using our trails whenever they're coming into the communities so I'm going to share my screen again and move to, all right, um, let's talk a little bit about readiness. Um, so this is um, a table that I, I pulled from my book um, that I think could be useful to think about. Um, so these are some things that I ask people, um, you know, in the book to, uh, reflect on, um, ranging from you agree with the statement, fully agree to fully disagree. Um, and I'll, I'll have you take a minute to look at them, but before you do, um, the second one says, uh, there's a clear entity that can lead to a, lead a trail town initiative here. By here, I mean here in my community, but you also may interpret that as here in Ohio or here in Louisiana. Um, so, you know, just, just so you know, um, and then the fifth item down, uh, reference um, community pain points. Um, and some those of you that were on the December workshop um, will remember that a pain point is a problem, whether real or perceived. Um, and some of the pain points that tend to bring, bring people to trails and trail towns is uh, like missed op economic opportunity, um, you know, lack of um, visitor services. Um, you know, th those are a couple of the really like main main ones or nobody's taking care of our trail um you know like what are the sources of frustration um that that might bring your community to thinking about trail towns so i'm gonna give you a minute to quietly look at this and reflect on this before we start conversation Okay, um, just so you know, this is the last slide of the presentation. Everything else is discussion. 
um, and hopefully some problem solving and some group think around trail towns. Um, so, so I'd like to maybe just see how it, how it goes to walk through this a little bit. Um, how did, how did everyone feel about the, um, my community values and embraces its trails? Um, was it easy for you to agree with that statement or is anyone on the complete opposite end? I welcome any comments or, um, yeah, comments. <laughs> this is where it's hard on Zoom. Uh, <laughs> and if you're, go ahead, Randy. Yeah, uh, the Cosi Gap Trail was one of the early trails in the in the state. It's 35 years old and it's planning. There was a lot of resistance at the start. You know, landowners that felt like this land belonged to them. That's all disappeared. So I, I'd have to move my our community values and embraces these trails to mostly agree. Uh, we don't mm -hmm. have active resistance. Um, mm -hmm. Getting energy or support that's you know maybe a little bit different. But yeah, right. The dial's been moved on that locally, I think. There's a general sense of support and in, in valuing the trail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Great. Good. I'm in the I'm in the same county as Randy, and, and I say that applies to all trails here. And uh, uh, some things that you that like just recently the trail, the Heart of Ohio I tra Trail, I belong with. Uh, the county gave us a very good just sum of money as a gift, and. Uh, we're, we're fine foundations are, are very much given Randy's trail and the Heart of Ohio trail money. It, it's, it's sort of one of those things I think that shows embracing like, uh, it, you know, it's monetary and governmental uh, support, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, we definitely have trail support. I mean, volunteers and, and boards and such, but uh, the government and, and the funding has been coming pretty nicely here. Yeah, that's good to hear. A lot of the time, um, funders are attracted to uh, multi-community programs um, and and the regional approach to to solving issues. So so your, you know, the comments around wanting to you know have a a group that continues to come back together to support each other, um, you know, that's that's something that that would be favorably um, received by funders um, or maybe and um, you know it sort of leads leads me to. Um, I don't know if I emphasize this enough, but um, any town along any trail can um, do things to be more trail friendly. Um, and any town can, you know, make some effort to become a, a trail town. But um, to me, when you have multiple communities working together, um, you know, whether that's, you know, through the Ohio to Erie Trail or um, through the state DNR or whatever it might be, um, your local um, region, um, you know, I think I think the idea of trail towns takes better hold, and there's more support. Um, there's more funding, um, so I would encourage you to think beyond the boundaries of your own community. Um, that being said, this table is just sort of like a gut check in terms of like your own community's readiness um, to do trail towns. Um, and any other uh, any thoughts on that uh, second question around the idea of whether there's a clear entity that can lead a trail town initiative in in your community? Was anyone able to 100% agree? Who typically leads these, Amy? Is it economic? Is it tourism? Wh who takes the lead on these generally? Yeah, yeah, it depends. Um, so for the state programs that I showed you, uh, Michigan's, um, let's see, Florida's is out of their DNR. Uh, Michigan's, I think, is out of um, economic development. And Kentucky's is out of tourism. Um, which is usually tied to economic development. So um, for those statewide programs, um, you have different types of agencies. And I, I think the type of agency that operates a program, um, you know, will usually inform um, the priorities for the program, um, whether, you know, what what the driving forces are, what what the what the goals are. Um, locally, um, Let's see, it depends. With, so with the gap, it was run by a nonprofit um, that 
um, that I worked for, um, and we were a nonprofit that was able to make business loans. So there was like an economic bent to what we were doing. Um, the Appalachian Trail, it's the Appalachian Trail Conservancy. So um, same for the Continental Divide Trail um, and some of the other like um, national scenic trails that have programs. So those ones are read, uh, led by large nonprofits that um, are interested in um, conservation and trail use and, and tourism. Does that, does that start to give you a sense for the variety? It, I mean, it ends up being whoever is most interested in, um, in ensuring improved trail to town connections and, and has the capacity um, to, to act on that. Randy, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, locally, I can think about, well, how could I bring, how could we bring some people together to work at, let's say, a countywide trail town? as we have uh, four villages in one city that the Ohio to Erie passes through. But does that mean that, uh, you know, 18 months into the program, we're in competition with a statewide initiative? I mean, mm -hmm. how do you, I mean, I think our local foundation, community foundation, which um, is really strong for a town of the size of Mount Vernon, um, if, if we put together a, grant proposal that had a two or three year window to do something. We, we could get funding locally to do this, but again, are we reinventing the wheel or are we gonna be kind of going in a different direction than, than something statewide? Yeah, um, so like, I, I know what you're saying. Uh, there are some, there can be brand implications, um, you know, or just marketing implications of um, you know, if, if you have a countywide trail town program and then two years later, the state launches a statewide program, you know, like are your communities participating in both or does one go away? You know, um, like that, those are important things to think about. Um, however, um, if there's nothing happening at all, if there's no movement, um, I would, I would move you know, like um, knowing that there may later be a state program that, that you um, fold into um, or that you, you know, may, maybe you find a way to successfully have, have both brands, you know, and, but, um, but yeah, it, it's kind of a tricky thing thinking about who's, what entities are, are the right ones to do it. Um, I would also look at the Buckeye Trail Town program because they have figured out how to um, have a program that exists and it's sort of like nested with the um, North Country Trail Town Program um, because of the shared alignment there. Um, and um, they, they um, would probably have some good thoughts for you about that. Um, and I just like for a second, Tom, I'm gonna, I was gonna direct a comment to you and then you can say what you wanted to say. Um, it, if the Ohio to Trail, Ohio to Erie, um, trail organization, like if, if you were a fully staffed organization, um, you know, you might be the right entity to do something along the Ohio to Erie Trail, just like for the gap, there was a program along the length of the gap. Um, that being said, like that's not the reality of your nonprofit. Um, you know, so I just want to acknowledge that, um, you know, might make sense, you know, conceptually, but, uh, you know, for, for now, um, it might not make sense in reality. Um, but um, go ahead, Tom, what were you gonna say? Uh, well, I'll let Jody or Lisa correct me if I'm wrong on this, but the Ohio Trails Vision, uh, which is an ODNR project overseen by Tom Arbor, basically is a vision for all kinds of trails, not just our bike trail. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the Buckeye Trail is part of the Ohio Trail Vision and uh, the Buckeye Trail has a trail towns. Now, um, my understanding of talking to Tom is that uh, trail towns in the vision was put there primarily by Rails to Trails Conservancy and I believe some influence by the Ohio to Erie Trail. So that's how it's sitting in that vision plan. Mm -hmm. And what's very important to understand, and, and Amy noted that, that every, a lot of that stuff in that vision plan 
needs legislative action for it to occur. In other words, it needs some funding, it needs someone to take it over. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, in, 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 in terms of Randy's point of, uh, say, Knox County having uh, like a, a, a trail town, and I know Amy's talked about this and it's in her book that, you know, it's not necessarily a town, but it's a collection of towns, a community or whatever. I think, I think that can happen. And I don't think anything gets lost, Randy. I don't know. And uh, I think it's a good idea. I haven't looked at the Buckeye Trail, uh, Trail Towns. So that's kind of interesting. That's all I wanted to say. So. Yeah, that's good. If I were you, Randy, I would do it. Um, you know, you might. Uh, He's the man. <laughs> <laughs> if you have something in your county, that, that might be the thing that sparks um, something a bigger movement in Ohio, you know, it, it might become the pilot, so to speak. Um, so right. I, I would, I would do it. And I would also like check in with the DNR and see if they were planning, you know, making yeah. any plans. It sounds like they might not be, but I would, I would check right. with them. And Randy, uh, we, we've been the topic of discussions at the Higher Deary Trail in terms of a pilot, as is some other towns. And I see Wayne sitting there. but <laughs> So you know, uh, the, the, the higher trail, higher dairy trails thinking of these things, but as Amy says, we're not full time and uh, there's, there's a lot of priorities right now. And obviously we made this a priority by making Amy the keynote of the conference and having these sessions, but uh, yeah. we're just moving along farther than the discussion that we've been before, don't you agree? So. Shit, that's true. I'm, I'm gonna uh, make one comment and then I'm gonna pass it to Julie. Um, one of the things that I do um, in, in the book is I talk about uh, trail town myths. And, and to me, two myths that, that go hand in hand is one is that you have to have a really robust, detailed program to do trail towns. And then the other one is that you have to do just a little bit um, and that you're, you know, just smack the trail town label on your town and you're a trail town. Well, um, I feel like the the reality might be somewhere between those two things. If you're planning the most robust program ever, you might not ever get it off the ground. Um, and if you just smack the label on and say, oh, that's it, I'm done, um, you know, you might not see the results you're looking for. Um, so, I mean, short of um, having a statewide program or trailwide program, um, I would just say do some of the things um, that you can to um, encourage um, a trail culture and to become more trail friendly. Do some of the physical, tangible infrastructure improvements at the community level. Um, and then, yeah, to experiment with um, what the county program looks like. See if you can get some funding to, to do something with, with the two or three towns nearest you. Um, yeah, so uh, Julie, you wanted to say something? Yeah, um, well, I have a little bit of experience um, working with um, ODOT and a little uh, more with ODOT, but a little bit with ODNR. And I really feel like you should um, you should talk to um, Tom at ODNR and tell him that, you know, we've been doing this, we've been meeting on it, there's big support for it around the state. I think that that would maybe allow ODNR to put some resources into this initiative, but even more important than that, and I think somebody earlier today mentioned the Legislative Trails Caucus. I think this is something that maybe someone should um, uh, do a presentation specifically about how it would be a benefit to Ohio to develop a Trail Towns pro uh, program and specifically talk about how every town is different and that program would be looking different in every town to get them to start thinking about it and knowing what it is. Mm. That's all. Well, that's that's important. Um, I think that um, that must have been as part of the small group conversation, the Legislative Trails Caucus, but I believe that the Rails to Trails Conservancy's Midwest mm -hmm. uh, field office is really uh, like a big part of that. Yeah. Um, they are um, I've worked with them on trail towns like they they are total trail town advocates and and I would use them as a resource. Um, yeah, I think that's a great idea to get that in front of the caucus. Yeah, Jody, I think so too. I see you had two thumbs up before. Yep. All right. Good. Um, I, I need to get these notes. So we one would be a letter of support to Tom and maybe we can get some of these organizations to all co-sign. And then the second is to work with the legislative caucus and tell them that there's support for this. So I, I'm going to write these down before I forget, but thank you. Both. Okay. Jody, while you're doing that, not just a letter of support to Tom, but an ask, 
Like, don't just say, we all support this. Say, we want this and we would like ODNR to consider leading it or something like that. Okay. Well, and if you want I me to read it, it before I, you send it, I'd be happy yeah. to. Thank you. Um, I, yeah. I see it a more discussion with Tom, too. He, he's more than open for discussion, so... Uh, yeah, and, and by by virtue of it being in the plan, he knows that we support it. I mean, yeah. we asked for it. Yeah. So yeah. I went to church need... with him when he was a little kid. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you have Trail Town initiatives um, all around you, right? Kentucky. Um, Michigan, Pennsylvania, uh, Michigan, by the way, they, they did, um, there was um, uh, legislation related to creating their statewide program, um, and they have good information um, available on their website. Um, so yeah, there's, there's good, good guidance there. Um, and there was like a couple of years uh, between the time that they passed the legislation and they, you know, the program became operational. So sometimes there's a lag, but um, you know, that, that state level support is something it's only in three states right now. And I just, I, I just, I want to know what the next state is going to be. <laughs> um, other, other thoughts or oh, Wayne, go ahead. Just on, you're, you're still on mute Wayne. Uh, okay. Amy, has uh, anyone approached Francis Joe Hamilton with the uh, Ohio Main Street program uh, to have a discussion about a trail wide trail town program? Not, I don't know. Um, I, it sounds like he's, he's with your statewide Main Street. Is that right? Yes, yeah, she, she is. She, um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's worth it. And um, for what it's worth, um, the Pennsylvania Downtown Center, which may be a similar um, organization to the one that Francis operates, runs a nature-based placemaking initiative in Pennsylvania. Um, and what I love about that is they're, um, they, they have a, a ready audience of Main Street managers all around the state and they're, you know, raising the profile of, of trails and the trail market and the importance of, of connecting to trails to that audience. So I think it makes a lot of sense to reach out to Frances and to let her know um, that, you know, the, the entire Main Street or the entire trail town um, model, it, it was modeled after Main Street. It's Main Street inspired. When she happened to stop at uh, our Main Street program to help uh, uh, introduce it to our small town, um, I happen to, I had an opportunity to talk to her on the side and I brought that subject up and she seemed to be well versed on the, the trail town concept. So it, it would not be foreign to her to, to have this discussion. Mm -hmm. Great. Did you get that Jody? Francis's name? I, I didn't. Okay. I, Jody, I, I'll, email, I'll email her contact information to you. Thank you, Wayne. Are there other thoughts on just the what we're what we're talking about? How how trail towns can be implemented, whether that's statewide or or locally. If not, um, I guess I'll ask the group: um, Was there anything else on this table that that sparked an idea or a concern for you? Oops. Wayne, is your hand raised again or is that from before? Okay. All right. Um, so we've reached that point in the workshop. Um, I don't know if anyone's noticed, we had a lot of people drop off. So I think what that says to me is the people who are here are really interested in this topic. And that's a good thing. Um, that's good that we know um, who is really um, looking at, at, at what to do, how to do trail towns. Um, this time is yours. If there aren't any questions, we'll end early. But if there are questions, um, you know, I'm here as a resource and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. The last comment I have, uh, Amy, to Randy's point, who's interested, of the people that's on this phone call right now, six are from Knox County, 
all different perspectives on this topic. So that that to me shows interest, but to, just an observation. Mm, mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna call out on uh, Laura and Anne, um, just so you know. Um, so, so Laura, you had some questions and concerns about your, your municipality, and I'm gonna ask you if there's anything you wanted to share. And, and Anne, you being not uh, local to Ohio, you, you, I think you win the uh, prize for, for furthest, um, furthest away from everyone else. Um, if there's anything you wanted to say or ask, um, I want to encourage you to. I feel really fortunate that I have stumbled onto this group um, at this point when we in our area are at such an effective point in time. Mm -hmm. We can use the lessons that have been learned and hopefully get people who are dealing with different pockets of money to go, oh yeah, we can put in this much, you can put in that much, that sort of thing. And also um, looking beyond our own little piece into who we are as a, we have parishes, not counties, but who we are as a region and what we connect to as far as sustainable tourism and um, as well as daily infrastructure for our demographics, mm -hmm. for, our, for our residents. Great, thank you for sharing. I'm glad you stumbled across this workshop too. Um, <laughs> you, you've reminded me of um, the uh, Project for Public Spaces. Um, they um, talk about what they call um, uh, lighter, quicker, cheaper projects. Um, uh, tactical urbanism is another way um, that they talk about it. But basically, the idea of of doing physical improvement projects or um, events, and you know, having some kind of like a presence in your community or along your trail that makes a temporary temporary splash. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do that are temporary, that are affordable, um, that are um, ways to get. Um, people's attention and to show um, poss what the possibilities are um, in terms of trails. And I, I would encourage you all to, to, to think about, um, you know, what, what are some of those early easy wins um, to, to start to turn heads um, in your communities? And Amy, one of the things you've reminded me of, I grew up in Wisconsin um, as a 4 h -er, as a young person. We all worked on that as volunteer labor to yeah. get one of the first rails to trails started. And in our community, we are looking at entry level jobs, especially for our youth and mm -hmm. our young people. And in all reality, fixing post-industrial rails into healthy trails is very doable with hands-on labor. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, whenever you have local um, youth and residents engaged, um, uh, this is getting to that culture piece of it, right? Of, of uh, people feeling an emotional um, connection to trails and to nature and to community improvement. Um, it's just, it's just how people are and it's how communities work. Um, we, we, um, it, it takes some early movement and some visible successes, um, you know, to 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 build these kinds of initiatives. Okay, uh, last uh, last thoughts or questions from anyone here. <laughs> I'll make another com I'll make another comment. Uh, yeah. This is a pretty good one. Uh, so if you're wondering what the popularity of trails are today, I'll give you a good example. The Ohio Area to Trail uh, decided to hold uh, monthly webinars, sort of tourist-oriented informational webinars. Our first one is tonight. <clears throat> we were expecting maybe 50 to 100 people. At this point, we have 650 people registered. Wow. For that webinar, and so we're, we're probably going to now need to re, uh, repeat it. I mean, we we have webinars scheduled for the next four months, but there's a pretty good example. It's just a simple webinar. What is this trail? And 650 people have responded. So wow, incredible. Mm -hmm. Jody, you were going to say something. 
Uh, I, I, I guess I, I almost see this group evolving into maybe a, a monthly check-in. Maybe we use your book as a guide and, you know, I, I guess I, I'm not sure what our next steps are, but I, I think there is a step after this. And I like Julie's suggestion that we work on Tom Arbor to get an official recognition. But <laughs> in the meantime, we need to keep the conversation going. That's all I'll say about that. Yeah. Well, that's great. And you know how to reach everybody. And I assume you will be thinking about that um, and that everyone who's here can be thinking about that and share their ideas um, with uh, Tom and Jody as well uh, with Lisa. So um, yeah, this is this is good, good movement. Um, I thank you for your time and your attention. And I just, um, I'm just a state over and I just want you to know that I'm rooting for you. And um, I, yeah, yeah, um, just that you can you can do a whole trail town initiative if you can you know just figure out how to get going with that and then in the meantime you can just do do some of the things that you know um, how to do to become more trail friendly. Um, so uh, yeah, good luck, happy trails. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, nice Amy. Thanks, Charity. Thanks, everyone. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Until we meet again. <laughs> happy trails. Happy bike trails. Heh <laughs> heh